What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Skinny Moose. And your boy Fast Squirrel. And as you can see, we have the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Murdoch. So, yeah, as you can hear my voice, you can't see me, but I'm here. I'm here. Well, Glad thank to be you for here. correcting me. <laughs> as you can hear, we got the Duke. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick it off. What made you become a wrestler? Uh, uh, just go into it as a kid. My dad used to take me to the fairgrounds in Nashville, and I just fell in love with it. And then I was just sitting on a couch one day and seeing this like local advertising one of these channels about being a pro wrestler. So I, uh, at 14, I went and chucked, uh, checked it out, and I've been with it ever since. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. I love that. Out of all the places you have wrestled, where would you say you got the loudest or the biggest crowd reaction? Uh, man. It's got to be probably like one of the TOSs at Showboat or – or a GCW crowd, like, they draw right now. They're selling out packed houses. So some of the GCW reactions uh, are, are the loudest. But the be best reaction to me personally was when uh, I went to Japan and wrestled Takeda. And after the match, uh, the fans sort of gave me the respect. So, yeah, that meant a lot. Fuck yes. So, uh, will you? Sp this is kind of funny because I mean, like, it made a lot of uh, news here lately. But would you speak on your feud with Teddy Hart? Oh, uh, so me and Reed, <coughs> me and Reed are wrestling, and uh, we sort of feel like the crowd's not with us, or they're distracted, or, or something's something's going on. After the match, we found out that uh, Teddy Hart had walked in, bought tickets, and sat front row which just threw everybody off. Everybody's now looking at him, waiting to see what happens. You know, it's just, it's crazy. And I don't know why he chose to do that. So after the match, they're like, hey, let's get him out of here. Because one, it's not good for him to be here. He's a piece of shit. So I probably don't want him associated with uh, ICW. So we tried to get him to go out peacefully. He wouldn't leave. He was drunk. So finally, like, I just snapped. I picked up something. And we're in Florida. Like, Florida is a stand-your-own-ground state. You know, like, I was across the street. If he'd have walked across the street, I'd have been in every right to beat him to fucking death with whatever with that I was Kindle stick. <laughs> that <Yeah>. Kindle stick. <laughs> so he wasn't, and like I told him, he wasn't wanting to fight because I'm not a woman. I'm not somebody he can beat up on. I'm not somebody he can bully around. And I don't, I'm a, I'm a good guy. I don't blow up. Usually, like, hardly ever happens. You know, it takes a lot to piss me off. But, yeah, he, he definitely pissed me off that night. Fuck yes. I love that. That is so interesting. So, uh, <coughs> what is your worst injury or your major one? I know your shoulder from Carnage Cup, but. What's your worst ones in and in and out of the ring? Uh, probably, uh, most of my injuries have been in the in ring. So uh, the cuts, the Carnage Cup cut, yeah. I mean, it was just a deep cut, but it really wasn't bad. I got, got a cut for, uh, VOW in a match with uh, G-Raver that split the other shoulder open. I would say not the cuts, but like the knee injury I did. I, hyper I hyperextended my knee. Uh, on my CZW debut Ooh. off a of destroyer, and that's never really got any better or healed or or whatever. So I think the knee injury is probably the worst. Understandable. <laughs> uh, what what advice would you give to someone breaking in the business? Uh, learn to learn your basics, learn to wrestle, especially if you're going to do death matches. Learn to wrestle first. Have at least five to five to ten years under your belt. Like try to get as much just regular wrestling and all that. Then make the transition into deathmatch wrestling. You'll get a lot more respect that way from the guys. A lot of the deathmatch guys look at people breaking into deathmatch wrestling now as just clout chasing or something like that. 
or doing it because you, you you're not wrestling or whatever you think it's instant exposure so if you can get a good track record under your belt as far as wrestling goes then making that transition you'll get a lot more respect that way oh that's the first time we've heard that answer i like that though i respect mm-hmm. that so uh do you have a favorite deathmatch weapon uh panes of glass are nice uh everybody's gonna say tubes because they get the best pop they're they're so easy uh i don't know really anything i could shove in my cheek i've been into that lately of putting things through my cheek so anything sharp so that'd be like syringes and fucking yeah, uh, syringes, skewers. Uh, and, yeah, the metal skewers and stuff like that. I, How was it wrestling in POR? It was crazy. A wild experience. Just like, <laughs> JJ, like the amount of work he puts into all that and, and the level of thinking. Like they just, a lot of people see that as just idiots in the backyard. But if you really knew how much they put into that, and the stunts that they pull off, like I totally respect everything they do, a hundred percent. I understand okay. that. So uh, Mickey Knuckles called you out. She said you were scared, and when she sees you again, it's on sight. So you want to? What was this? How long ago was uh, this? Um, I did an interview with her. Let me pull it up because I know it's posted. Oh, has it been months ago, though? No, it's been probably oh, about three weeks ago at the latest. Nice. Yeah. It was just here recently. She was like, she wants you because she, she made a list of deathmatch elites that she wants to fight. And you was on there. And I was like, well, would you ever fight Murdoch? You know, and I was naming them off and. She was like, Murdoch won't fight me. And I was like, really? Why? She's like, I don't know. He's just scared. And she's like, well, when I see him again, it's on sight. There's no stopping it. I'm like, oh, fuck. What the hell? Huh. Oh, well, we've had, we've wrestled. Like, that's total. Like, we've done tags. It's just never presented itself. A couple of times it has, and it's not happened. Like, I'm not going to take a booking just to keep a uh, match when I, I can go make money i can go do gcw or something like that like if it happens and it works out it will happen there's no there's no fear there. i love Mickey. i think i think she's sick i think that she doesn't get the respect she deserves but as far as fear no i don't fear i don't fear anyway anybody i've worked I've been in the ring with the top deathmatch guys, all of them. You name them, I've done it. So, yeah. That's true. Shit, it was posted two weeks ago. Oh, nice. Um, is there anyone you would like to call out? Uh, not really. Like I said, you know, I every goal that I've set, that I, anybody that I've wanted to wrestle, I've already done it. Uh, so at this point, it's just I mean, now it's just now wrestling for the fans, just doing like I, I have no more goals. That's why one of my other questions was, what's your next big death match go? Well, I guess winning TOS. I guess that is a goal still on the table. Yeah, I'd love to see you win TOS. I'd love that. Maybe get you and TOD, Alexi and TOD too. Yeah, I've done a couple of TODs. Uh, so sort of, sort of check that off. Uh, I guess a cage of death I used to want to do, but you know, some of those goals, you know, you grow past. Would you ever do another carnage cup? Uh, no, no, there's, no. Uh, there's this, I see a grow, like I did them when I was younger in the business and stuff like that, but there's just so much negativity uh related to some of the dumb shit that kevin says so it's just best for me to stay stay my course you know i've done them i've checked off carnage cup you know so yeah there's nothing there's nothing left for me to do there that's understandable i respect that i respect that how how was it to win the gcw ultra and the tag team title 
Uh, great. I've won the tag titles with two different partners. I won them with Reed uh, back in the How days at uh, Game yeah. World, and then I won them with Cologne. Uh, both meant meant uh, meant everything for different reasons. Uh, me and Reed, of course, winning them meant a lot. We've been tagging, and then me and Cologne winning them, and then going to Japan, obviously, and defending them against uh, Jun Kasai and Takeda. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that meant the world. So yeah, those those tag title runs were great. As far as the ultraviolet champion goes, I think that was great because I was just coming back into GCW, had the feud with Cologne, and then paying it off with that, and then coming yes. back to Cage of Survival. So yeah, I think I think winning that belt led to some things that uh, were really a positive. And and HP fifteen. When you went to put Atticus to the glass table, you messed up your knee. Did you do anything major to it? Uh, is that the one in Indianapolis where we fell off the platform? I'm wanting to say, yeah. And, you know, I went to that glass table, and you can obviously say you started favoring that knee. Uh, yeah, it, like I said, it was the knee that I talked about earlier. It uh, Ever since hyperstending it or whatever, like it sort of will pop out on me at times. I've got a brace that I should be wearing, but I don't because this is <laughs> awkward. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, that was definitely tweaked in my knee. Yeah, that was one of my follow-up questions about the uh, 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 tag team titles. When you said something about Cologne, I was I had a follow-up question was, what was it like to tag with Alex Cologne? Oh, it's uh, it's great. He, uh, I've never met somebody more intense or just determined to have the best match on a show. Uh, he definitely tries to go out there and fill the show. He takes what he does, and he gets he gets angry when he doesn't see that same, you know, fight in others. And sometimes he gets the rap of coming off like a dick, or people give him like he's just an old bitter vet or whatever, but it's more of his passion and just how he shows it. I think a lot of times he's misunderstood. How was it being wrestler of the year? Uh, great, especially being a deathmatch guy mainly. So, yeah, yes. that's definitely a, a very cool accomplishment and everything like that. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate everybody that voted for me. I'm, I'm one, of course. I have to vote for my favorite. <laughs> I love the Duke. I love the Duke. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How was it wrestling in a wet ring considering you done it in uh, IWA Duke South in 2012? Uh, hard. It's so, like, that match with Brandon Kirk when it was just pouring down rain, like, so much props to him because the ring's slippery, you're slippery. Yeah, it was definitely it stuck. Yeah, it was not pleasant. <laughs> I didn't think that that matches go over too well. I mean, that was the one that I found. I, didn't, I haven't seen the one with Brandon Kirk, but I've seen the other one, and I'm like, oh, my fucking God. This shit's got to be bad for, you know, they're out there wrestling, and you can't really get a good hold, a good grip, or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's measurable. And then you're probably going to get sick. It's just a whole lot of issues. It's just not good. <laughs> I understood that. What was it like wrestling Schlack for the XPW King of the Deathmatch title? I love Schlack. Uh, I know there's a, I know there's this uh, story out there that I'm this just big woke asshole that hates everybody and hates everything that's XPW. But I love Schlack. Like me and him, as far as wrestling goes just click on a different level than anybody else. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about Schlack. Uh, it's crazy, and you're putting your life in your own hands going out there with the maniac, but yeah, he, yeah, I love Schlack. Can we ask why you switched your name from Damian Payne to John Wayne Murdoch? Uh, that was a that was an Ian thing. When I did King of Death 2011, Ian was like, uh, just telling me how I looked like Dick Murdoch and how I favored Murdoch. And I'd heard that my whole career pretty much. 
So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm hearing it. I'm, I'm doing this deathmatch thing now. So if I'm ever going to just change it up, it's now. You know, I'm being introduced to a whole different set of fans. It could be fresh. So I did the one King of Death is Damian Payne and then switched and been John Wayne Murdoch ever since. I respect that. Yeah, you do. I, that's what I've always said. Like when I first, you know, when I first seen you, I was like, wait a minute. I thought like I was young, but I was like, wait a minute, you know. And then like as I grew up, I was like, to this day, you kind of remind me of like Murdoch, like you're his brother or his son or something. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, squirrel. <laughs> Sorry. How was it to participate in TOD? It was cool. Uh, I enjoyed my matches there. Uh, my first, the first TOD, it was me and uh, Jimmy Havoc and RSP. It was fun. Uh, it was fine. And then uh, the second TOD I did, I think, was me and Jimmy Lloyd. Uh, we, me and Jimmy are another uh, set of guys that just click. So I enjoyed that. I had fun at TOD. Like, you know, it was it was to do it. I wish I'd have went further and built off of doing them and, and it led to more, but it never did. So it is what it is. You seem to have a story, like a history or a rival with Josh Crow. Will you speak on that? Oh, yeah, Josh Crow, man, he's I've known him a long time. He's probably one or two longest people I've known in the business. Uh and it's another guy I just clicked with, and we had insane matches in Nashville, and then I pulled him into the deathmatch thing. And he, he took to it. He enjoyed it. But uh, I guess he's living his life in Nashville right now. I don't know if he's still wrestling or not, but, yeah, still doing good. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Out of all the tournaments you have, you have participated in, which one would you say is your favorite and why? I think the NGI, the one I won. Yeah. Just <laughs> that one was, was pretty fucking brutal. It, just, <laughs> it wrapped everything up in one. Like the year prior, I come back at NGI. Uh, we had this whole year of storytelling with me and Clone are wrestling each other now we're tagging we go to japan together we break back up and now we go to the tournament like yeah it just it, it wrapped everything into one it was perfect what weapon weapon or contraption do you think hurts the worst anything with barbed wire man barbed wire sucks it's just miserable All right. caught up in it yeah, yeah anything with wire like uh like uh Caribbean nets or the the spider nets or whatever those those things suck. I honestly thought you was gonna say the fucking glass, like the glass contraption that you and Clone had at a uh, Cage of Survival. Oh no, those those are fine. It's just barbed wire that sucks. It's horrible. I... Understandable, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead, squirrel. Sorry. <laughs> how what? How was it to wrestle Alex Cologne in Cage of Survival? Terrifying. I'm afraid of heights. So being up there and being able to touch the ceiling of the showboat was was uh yeah it's the carousel room it, it sucked coming off that and I think we come off of it like three or four times. I know three at least. Yeah yeah it was just terrifying. But we, we made it through it. Uh, Clone takes so much profit. He does. So. I never would have thought that you were scared of heights. Yeah, yeah terrified. I just do it. I, I just do it because, like, you know, you're, you, you, put your, you fuck yourself. You put yourself in the position where you have no other choice but to do it. That's a mind-blowing Right, coming from you. Is the me is the Mega Bastard still a thing? Uh, yeah, we we are tagging in Ohio at Unsanctioned Pro. Oh shit! I didn't realize y'all was still going. I ain't yeah, seen nothing on it. Very soon, we're gonna have 
a new Mega Bastard shirt out. So look out for that. Oh, fuck yes. Oh, yeah. What do you think yeah. is the most most brutal thing that you've ever done? Man, shit. That's, I think the one hour, the one engagement is probably the most brutal thing I've done. A king of death. Well, not one hour. I think it was 49 minutes. But that match was brutal. Yes, that match was fucking... Uh. And I noticed that uh, you wrestled for Juggalo Championship Wrestling. How was that? <laughs> so, the the match was fine. It was... Uh, I forgot what year it was. I want to say maybe 2014. But uh, I did like the death match Battle Royal. It was fine. Uh, me and Josh Crow did it, and uh, the the funny experience was is I get my uh, I get my check at the end of the night, and it was paid to John Wayne Murdoch, so I couldn't cash it. So and then like some people had left, so I had to like void out the check, send it back, and then I got a new one. But I always <laughs> thought that was funny, like what? Yeah, that they put. They asked for my government name, and then they still put John Wayne Murdoch on the check. So I always thought that was funny. <laughs> wow. That's something. How was it facing Owen White in the 60-man Iron Man match? Great. I love Oren. Uh, I, I think that Oren doesn't get the uh, pushes he deserves. Uh, he's tremendously talented. Yeah, the 60 minute Iron Man was insane. Uh, I've done two of them, uh, and I don't think I want to do a third. I understand that. Um, since you faced Slack, since you fought Slack multiple times, what time was your favorite and why? Uh, the first one we had at the the NHB Drive-In Show in Atlantic City. Fuck yes. Yeah, that one's my favorite Schlack match. All Fuck of them yes. good to great, but that one was on a different level. I was just coming back from elbow surgery and everything like that. And yeah, that match definitely kicked off. Like the match with Eric at NHB1 started the whole thing, but put me on this level and to go on that run at, at ICW that I did. Fuck yes. Slack, would you say, who would you say give, give, uh, who would you say gave you the, a run for your money? As far as toughness goes and as far as being able to just fucking take glass after glass and just be cut up and still go, Eric Ryan is one tough motherfucker and he enjoys it. He loves the pain. Like, he is a maniac. So, yeah, Eric Ryan definitely gives me a run for my money. I think, oh, that's, yeah. why we make, I think that's why we make good rivals, because we're just, he is on that level. Fuck okay, yeah, I thought you was going to say Slack or Alex Klonger for a minute. They, those guys, I'm not taking away anything from, from those guys. Those guys, they're all tough. All Anybody that gets in there and does this shit is definitely crazy and tough. Of course. As far as just like being a pain pig, like Eric Ryan, <laughs> for sure. Really? I mean, I know he'll go, but I can never consider it like gay. All right. Go ahead, Squirrel. How, how does it feel to win the unsanctioned hardcore, unsanctioned pro hardcore title? Feels good. You know, anytime a company puts trust in you to, uh, you know, be the front runner in that division or, or whatever you're, you're going to do. It doesn't mean a lot. Hopefully I can take it and leave the belt better off than when I got it, when I, you know, eventually give it to somebody else or, or something like that. So, yeah, every anytime somebody trusts you and gives you something from their company, it, it, it should mean a lot to you. Yeah, that's true. Yes, sir. Yes. How bad did the gusset plate get you when Alex Ocean hit you in Pit Fighter 4? Oh, yeah, that was oh, – that's 
still probably the bloodiest match in ICW history. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was insane. He got me good. He got me good. And funny story about this. It's not funny, but he passed out in the locker room. He was passing out, like, in and out from the blood loss. Oh, shit. I mean, when he hit you with that gusset, and I seen that you grabbed your, you grabbed your arm and then wrapped it up, I'm like, oh, fuck. I was toshing, I know he's in a band, but he don't wrestle anymore, does he? Uh, I think off and on. I think that, uh, I'm not sure, so I don't really want to speculate, but maybe his body, his neck, and stuff like that, that he just didn't see the risk anymore, so he's doing something else. Uh, so whatever he's doing, I wish him nothing but the best. True. How was it winning the King of the Death match versus Southern Sickness Cups tournament? Oh, nice. So, uh, I always enjoyed uh, doing stuff for Ian. He gave my start pretty much in deathmatch wrestling. So much that I learned being at those shows. Uh, I hate how I hate that he couldn't be a better promoter or a better person so he could still be around because i think as a pro wrestler if you haven't been through iwb mid-south then you can't really call yourself a pro wrestler an indie guy because there's so much so many talents went through there and there's a lesson to learn at iwb whether it's good bad or whatever you're going to either learn what to look out for from being fucked over or you're gonna you're gonna get some of those matches, uh, the indie dream matches, or whatever. But you know, there's something you can take away from an IWB Mid South show. So it just sucks that uh, you know he couldn't do right and not fuck. How was it winning King of the Death matches 2016 and winning NGI Seven? Uh, yeah, Winning King was the, because uh, I started doing death matches at King of Death in 2011, so that was definitely uh, a very early on goal for uh, death match wrestling. So yeah, Winning it to, uh, 2016 was great, but I'll, 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 I'll always feel like I should have won it in 2015 when I had the match with Gage and I made it to the finals. Uh, so I think it was an opportunity miss and maybe we waited one year too late, but it doesn't change. It doesn't take my name off the uh, list of guys of one King of death. So I still, it still means a lot. That's understandable. Sorry. How was it being in the uh, GCW war games match against team Japan? Oh, crazy. I'll say it like you can write this down. This fucking clip right here. Can there will never be another match with that many great deathmatch wrestlers in it. Never. You will never be able to book it again unless they recreate that match again. Here, there will never be a match in, in the States that good. And I'm not even oh, talking shit. about match quality. I'm talking about just lineup, names on paper, like how strong that match was. Yeah, it will never happen again. Oh, shit. That was a good-ass fucking match. Yeah, it was. What was it like facing K Kasai in Japan? Insane. He's a maniac. Uh, <laughs> like, all those guys. Him, Takeda, like, on a different level of insane. But yeah, that was that was the goal. Like, if you don't get – if you get into deathmatch wrestling and your two goals are not Japan and Kasai – then why are you getting cut up? Why are you doing this? It's pointless. You got to have those goals to keep you going. And I got to do it. And I got to do it in Japan multiple times. I think I've wrestled with Kasai in Japan three times, one single, and then a couple of multi-mans and a tag. And then I got to do it here in the States. So, yeah, I'm very blessed to be able to, to be in the ring with him. Okay, and yes. multiple times with Takeda as well. When we interviewed yeah. Takeda, Takeda, Takeda spoke highly of you, saying that you was a really good professional technical wrestler. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, and, it, 
He said Slack was more of a powerhouse, he said, but you, the one that really made him test his wrestling skills, and I was like, that's Murdoch for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) He's a beast. He's definitely a beast. Go ahead, Squirrel. (coughs) Speaking of uh, going to Japan, besides Japan, have you wrestled anywhere else besides Japan? Uh, Yeah. International? Yeah, I did – England twice. Uh, great. Uh, I love TNT. Uh, Rise over there. Like, yeah. I did England. And then I, I've done Mexico four times. I've done Zona twice. And then NGX twice. Uh, yeah, Australia. Yeah. And I've never been to Australia. I was supposed to go, but I got oh, hurt. Yeah. And I uh, fucked my ribs up. So I wasn't able to make the Australia tour. But then I did Tijuana. Yeah, so I've done Mexico and England. Like I wanna I wanna do death matches in China. Like I wanna go everywhere and do death matches. Fuck. I know you've been to Canada in a death match, haven't you? Uh not yet. I'm supposed to be going in July. Oh, that's where it was. Yeah. Who would you say is your biggest rival right now, or do you have one? I don't really have one. Uh, you know, right now it's just been, you know, matches and, and stuff like that. So no, nothing really as far as the story goes that I have a rival right now. Understandable, understandable. What do you think about being the last American to face Drew Parker in the States for his retirement match? Um, it was a very – very emotional time seeing the the emotions that he was going through like that. I'm so glad that you know, he he came back like that. Right. But Deathmatch wrestling needs guys like Drew Parker. Uh, yeah, he's just a special person. I love Drew. That was a good fucking match. I got I got to say that Drew gave it his all and you gave it your all and it was fucking. It was good. It was bloody as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Go ahead, Squirrel. <coughs> How was it defending the IWA Mid-South heavyweight title against Gage and Slack at King of the Death Match? 18. That's the uh, filing cabinet. Uh injury uh it was cool uh, i was cool being in there with two fucking just maniacs i hated that the filing cabinet thing hurt schlack bad as it did like that was a really fucked up injury and thank god there was people in the back that got to them and, and stopped bleeding. there was this black dark blood just pulling up in the floor so oh, care of it uh, but yeah, so I mean that match will always be remembered for that. So, but yeah, it was fun. Oh shit! What does it feel like to be hit by darts? Considering you know Parker used you as a dart board, and you used uh, I can think it was G Raver maybe as a dart board. Yeah, uh, darts are fun. Uh, they definitely hurt. It's definitely one of those like mental things of of just getting through it just shuts out of your mind is do you like think like oh i'm about to get darts darts thrown at me you're just gonna psych yourself out it's just you know gritting your teeth and doing it just understand oh, fuck me though i don't think i could do <laughs> i have no clue what's going on with squirrel baby. this connection seems to be shit because what was it like when you and Reed Bentley went against the Rock and Roll Express? Fun. And that was that was that was a night off. Uh, I would love to do that a hundred times. Uh, Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson treated us with nothing but respect. Uh, they didn't they didn't talk down to us. They didn't big league us. Like they they're such great guys. Yeah, that was very fun. To end to do it in Evansville at the Coliseum, so much history building. Yeah, it definitely 
was one of my favorite GCW moments. And to get Ricky to do tubes. Yeah, it was fun. Fuck yes. I enjoyed that match myself. How was it wrestling in a glass ceiling match? Uh, fun. You know, all those, again, I'm afraid of heights. All that's got to do with the scaffold and all that. So it's just, you know, you're you're panicking inside, but, you know, once you get through it, it's no better feeling. So, yeah, all that's been fun, man. Anything that I've done at GCW has been has been nothing but a pleasure. Understandable. When, when G. Raver cut you with the light tube and VOW, was it in the same shoulder as you cut in Carnage Cup? No, it was the opposite one. So now I've got... Two pretty much identical scars on my shoulders. Uh, yeah, it was just a freak accident uh, when he did the spot with the tubes with his knee. Uh, he didn't realize that they had hit each other, so one was broke. So he just brought it right down. I mean, uh, freak accident. Shit happens. You move on. Oh shit. So. Uh would you like to speak on leaving ICW? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. So, uh, pretty much it led down to what anything in this business leads to. Uh, respect and money. And I didn't feel like I was getting enough of either. So, you know, I pretty much uh, hit him up and was like, uh, what are we going to do, Mania Weekend? Uh, I will be available. I don't think that GCW is doing many death matches because of Philly and that building and then all that. So it's like, you know, I'm pretty much going to be for you exclusive. Like I'll probably just do you. And uh, he pretty much come back with, you know, if I couldn't have somebody else split the cost of me and I priced myself out of this and, and just gave me the runaround. I was like, okay, first off, like, without me and a few other people, ICW wouldn't have got the traction that it did. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm the only one. I'm not saying that I was the only reason ICW was anything. But I'll say I was a big part of it. I'll say that I was one yeah. of the main three or four guys that was on every show that busted his ass during the pandemic and during all this, you know, shit. So I felt like I'd eat enough shit paydays that I deserved, you know, what I was asking for. What I was asking for wasn't insane. So, yeah, it just come down to that. So I was like, once he told me pretty much that I'd priced myself out of the date uh, because he chose to run Tremont's building. He chose to limit how many fans he could get. So it wasn't my fault. Also, if you got a budget, I think one of my names should be almost at the top of that budget, along with some other guys like Eric Ryan and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just didn't feel like I was getting the respect or the money. So, you know, I just I said, fuck it. I was like, OK, I quit. And then I, to come to find out a lot of people had sent me eight by tens that they were questioning the signature on they were like hey this doesn't really look like your signature because i have a shitty signature but it's distinct so i think that he was signing shit and selling it on the side on ebay so i didn't like that so yeah it was just a lot of uh respect issues and some boundaries that he didn't respect i understand that i completely understand that um, what does what do you think is your best intergender match was? Uh, Casey, hands down. Any time, any time. I will say that is the the best thing that I was ever ever able to do at ICW was the first her that really like she'd wrestled uh, Danny before, but that match really kicked her off into the run she had. Or whatever. So yeah, I think Casey is one of the best things, and the, the one of the proudest things that come out of the ICW run was that. I respect that. 
Uh, how did you? How did you feel? Uh, wrestling. Tommy Vendetta in the pit. I enjoyed that match. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. The dirt pit sucked. Uh, that was horrible. Your boots got all fucked up. You're just covered in dirt. But yeah, I, I enjoy Tommy. I always, um, always be a Tommy Vendetta fan and supporter. Uh, I think he's got tons of potential that he hasn't even scratched the surface yet. And in two, three years times, the Tommy we know now will be nothing than the Tommy then because he'll be so much fucking better. But yeah, I love Tommy. Fuck yeah. Can we ever see you in another King of Death yeah. matches or TOD? Considering Circle Six does King of the Death matches now, uh, that's always a possibility. Hey, I'll leave anything open. Uh, you know, I have some, I have some things that I won't do just because my personal beliefs or, or how I feel. But yeah, the Circle Six King of Death, yeah, you, that could be a possibility for sure. Hell yes, I'd love to see you in a fucking King the King of the Death match. All right, squirrel. <clears throat> what was it like wrestling in RPW? I love Chris. Uh, RPW is great. I am uh, with me and Chris have been talking. I will be at RPW a whole lot more. Uh, oh. More of a mainstay than I was previously. So, yeah, yeah. Big things. Chris is working on some really big things for RPW. Uh, not only here, but I think he's got some irons in the fire internationally. So, yeah, oh. I think things are coming for RPW. Oh, Ooh. yes. Fuck yes. So, was NHB such a thing with Mick Foley? And what do you think about Foley? Oh, man, what a moment. What a, yeah, that was a crazy how that all happened. Uh, I think there, I, Mick Foley spoke about it uh, on his podcast about how it came about. But from my perspective, it, like I'm sitting at a show. It was me and Reed. We had just wrestled the War Dogs for JCW. So we're sitting there and uh, I get a message saying, hey, can I give Mick Foley your number? He wants to speak to you. So it's like, cool fuck yeah let's do it so as we're getting as we're in our uber to the airport for our flight home from jcw i'm on the phone with foley and he's going he's like he we're talking and we're just bouncing ideas and it was so cool and he was like thank you for being so easy to deal with this is gonna be awesome so yeah and then like i hit up danny i was like hey this is a this is a possibility if we're cool with it. Like, we can do this. So then putting them two back in contact. But yeah, what a wild, like, just going from having an amazing match with four dogs, and then you're on the phone with Foley talking about possibly, you know, doing something, and then taking the double arm DDP, and probably being one of the last guys to ever take that bump from Foley. Yeah, it was. it's definitely one of the best things. To happen to me. One of the coolest. Uh, my Foley said, obviously, I'm pretty sure you've seen it, that he wouldn't do another match, but fuck if he could, I'd love to see you and him go at it. Oh, yeah, I had hit him up. We had talked when he announced or whatever, and I was like, hey, whatever whatever guy you choose for your last one, like it's going to be awesome. But I was like, me and you would fucking kill it. And he was like, I know we would. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'd have been his pick, but it definitely would have wanted it and would definitely his death what he wanted. But I'm also respect his decision. I'm not doing it. You know, he's got he's got so much to lose going out there just for one last death match. You know, he's got his comedy stuff, you know. So, yeah, I'm definitely support the decision not to do it. I understand that. I have no clue what happened to Squirrel. But that's all my questions, and I want to thank you for coming on and giving us your time. 
Oh, yeah, I enjoy this. I enjoyed it. I'd love to come on for a part two, maybe me and Reed together next time. Yes. Um, but yeah, I would definitely yeah. love that. Yes, I would love to have a part two with you and get Reed. I'm supposed to have an interview with Akira. I got to reschedule it, though. Uh, okay, yeah, Akira's cool. Hell yeah. Uh, fuck his dog, though. You tell him, <laughs> you tell him John Wayne said fuck his dog. <laughs> All right. Uh, if we could, I'd love to get all four of y'all on you, Sato, Reed, and Akira. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely down. And real quick, I just want to plug. I dropped some new shirts on Deathmatch Worldwide. The uh, the Cabbage Patch Deathmatch Kids design is now available on there. And then hopefully Ooh. some new trading cards and stuff like that. So just follow me on Twitter. I mean, the Rabbit King, sorry. The Rabbit King, and then I'm on Facebook, John Wayne Murdoch, on Instagram under the same thing, John Wayne Murdoch. So yes, yeah, give me a follow, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I did this. Fuck yes, thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you for coming on, sir. Anytime, anytime, just let us know when we're, we'll schedule you and whoever. Nice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. You guys. Good night. Good night. You too. Thank you.